This is a run-through of the Wellington ICU COVID intubation. This is a copy of our intubation checklist. Initially looking through the assessment column, things to consider are, is a difficult airway predicted and can we optimise our preparation? Should we consider some pre-induction sedation for agitated or less compliant patients? Could we remove any excess facial hair if time and safety allows? Is there a risk of physiological compromise? We anticipate that these patients will desaturate during the induction and intubation process. Does the patient have any known allergies? Are the ICU, SMO and ACNM aware that we are intubating a confirmed or potential COVID patient? Importantly, we should communicate with the patient and their family and discuss goals of care before proceeding. Whilst running through the intubation scenario, we'd like you to pay particular attention to the use of the ET tube clamp and turning of the oxygen on and off, which of course is different to our usual practice. Now we'd like to draw your attention to the equipment in preparation for intubation of the COVID patient. Starting with the airway tray, this will be pre-prepared outside of the patient's room and should be checked through thoroughly to ensure that nothing is missed prior to entering. In this box will be two ET tubes, a syringe, anchor fast for securing the tube, some lubricant gel, a bougie, an oropharyngeal airway, a nasogastric tube and a videolaryngoscope with one blade. It's very important to check the battery for the videolaryngoscope prior to entering to make sure that you have enough battery life left to proceed with the intubation. This is also a good time to check through the sizing of the equipment that you might choose to take in with you, including the size of the ET tubes, the size of the oropharyngeal airway, and also worth considering the size of the eye gel that will be in the patient's room. Next will be the tray of equipment that will remain in the ante room outside of the patient's actual room. This will be some backup airway equipment which can be made available at short notice should you require it, but doesn't necessarily need to be taken into the room. This will include a spare videolaryngoscope blade and a direct laryngoscope. For the purposes of intubation of a COVID patient in Wellington ICU, um, we now have an allocated negative pressure base, which is the south base. We also have two negative pressure rooms. These are rooms 17 and 18, both of which have an ante room. In the event of intubating the patient in either room 17 or 18, donning and running through the checklist should first occur in the ante room prior to entering the patient's actual room. With regards to South Base, donning and running through the checklist will occur outside the patient's room in the large negative pressure area. Whilst the team is assembled and running through the checklist prior to entering the patient's room, it is worthwhile talking over team roles. For our intubation scenario, we have an experienced intubator, a second doctor administering the drugs and managing physiology, an experienced nurse who will become the airway and ventilation assistant. The bedside nurse and airway assistant is likely to be inside the room already with the patient, whilst the runner can go through the checklist with the team outside. During the checklist procedure, it's important to run through your airway equipment and adjust any sizes. It's also important at this stage to run through a drug check. Um, induction agent. So we've got ketamine, we use two per kilo, so 160 milligrams. Awesome, and muscle relaxant. Brocuronium, 1.2 per kilo, so we're going to use 100 milligrams. Awesome. For vasopressors, we've got terminal and adrenaline. And then for post intubation sedation, there's two to four. Do you want to? Awesome. At this point, you may choose to alter the drugs on the checklist. That is perfectly acceptable, but should be discussed with the team before entering so that everyone is aware of what will be happening once you enter the room. Okay, Stan, how are you doing? The doctors are just getting dressed up to come in and put in that breathing tube we were talking about. Just start with your breathing a bit. Hi. Hi, Sarah. My name's Sarah. This is Jenny. We're a couple of the doctors here. We're just going to get things ready and all prepared for this breathing tube. So we'll explain what we're doing as we do it. First of all, I'm just going to check that these arms are working. You're just going to feel me squeezing on your arm again. It's going to go up a little bit more frequently now. Once in the room, we should do another check through the intubation checklist with regard to the patient in-room equipment. 
This includes an AMBU bag with an attached PEEP valve, viral filter and end tile CO2 suction, which includes both Yanka suction and inline suction, both of which should be connected before you proceed. An ET tube clamp, which should be at hand always. An eye gel, which will live in the patient's room and preparation for a surgical airway, which will include a scalpel, bougie and a size 6 ET tube. Next, we should ensure that the ventilator is set up and ready for our patient. This will include adjusting the patient particular settings and the ventilator settings. With regards to patient monitoring, we should ensure that a SATS probe is attached to the patient. The end tidal CO2 cable is connected to the AMBU bag. There's ECG monitoring attached and the blood pressure, which is likely to be non-invasive at this stage, is cycling every one minute. Uh, okay, any questions or concerns? Nope. So, plan A will be a video ring scope and bougie. Plan B, eye gel. Plan C, you will go back to face mask, two hand technique, plus a gazelle. And plan D will be a surgical airway. Happy? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys all good? Yep. Okay, Kathy, you can give me a hand. At this stage, the intubator will turn off the oxygen running through the non-rebreathe prior to removing the mask, and the airway assistant can turn on the oxygen flow attached to the AMBU bag to 15 litres per minute. The AMBU bag will then be fitted to the patient's face with a two-handed technique, counselling the patient through this and reassuring them of what you're doing. We would advocate for starting with 15 litres of flow and however much PEEP is required to achieve the best possible oxygenation whilst minimising the leak from the mask. The patient should then be pre-oxygenated with a good two-handed seal over the face mask for approximately three to five minutes, aiming to achieve the best possible saturations prior to induction. Okay, so saturations are 91, so... Oh, and you have to check it. Yeah, have to check the pass. Okay, so we're just going to get you off to sleep nice, Dan. It's going to give 160th ketamine. Once the drugs have been administered, you can then use this time during induction to reposition your patient to lower the head of the bed and position the patient appropriately for the intubator. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, and that's one minute off. Okay, so I'm ready to have a look. Can you switch the oxygen off, please? So oxygen's off, thank you. And I'll take the video scope. Yes. Take the video scope on. Okay, bougie, please. Okay, I've got bougie. Mm -hmm. I've got the top of the bougie there. Okay, I've got the chip. Okay, bougie out. And then top up. Oxygen on. Okay, so we can secure that. Okay, so I'm just sticking this down onto your face there. Once the ET tube is secured, prior to disconnecting the AMBU bag, it's important that the airway assistant then clamps the tube. The oxygen can then be turned off at the AMBU bag supply. Clamps there. Okay, oxygen then off. The AMBU bag disconnected from the ET tube before connecting to the ventilator circuit, removing the clamp and starting ventilation. At this point, it's important to remember to disconnect 
the CO2 monitor from the Ambu bag cuvette and clip it directly onto the cuvette attached to the ventilator circuit. Get a good tidal volume. And I have started the bubble bowl. Great, and I'll get ready to put this on the tubing. It's looking good there, the sets have come back up. Once ventilation has been confirmed, the intubator can then insert a nasogastric tube, the position of which can be confirmed with a chest x-ray once everyone is ready.